Hey guys, so ready for the first non-Jewish update in quite a while. Uh, so, and don't mind my hair, it's always like this. I shower at night and uh, I don't have to, time to untangle it in the morning. And so it gets like this because trust me, in the morning there is no time to undo an entire night of mess. And you can see my white hair too. Yes, I'm old. I'm getting old. Anyway, so lately, first I want to say that my kosher diet has led me to let lose a substantial amount of weight. And uh, that was an intended because I actually I'm eating far more than I tend to eat normally. Which which is weird because you know I forget to eat, but somehow the the need to keep kosher, uh, I've been eating far more than I don't know. I probably ate more in the last three weeks than in the last three months prior to that. Um, so yeah, I've been losing quite a lot of weight, and um, since my knees are doing better now, I am not. I don't have a cold anymore. I'm starting to exercise again, and I'm excited because uh, you know I th I'm quite curious to know what the results of you know being kosher. Well, technically, it's not exactly kosher because if something is cooked by non-Jews or in non-kosher utensils. It's not Jewish per se, but uh, the ingredients that I'm eating stuff is uh, following the kosher rules. Even though, you know, there are technicalities that make it not kosher, but I'm not violating any, not eating anything forbidden under kosher laws. So anyway, I'm quite curious to see how exercising while kosher will impact on my body weight clearly without it's like i never dieted because uh well technically i i t when i diet i tend to eat more than usually because i forget to eat all the time i can go weeks without eating anything substantial uh basically I, I, there were times I would only eat an apple a day, and uh, not because uh, I was dieting or anything, because I was just, just not hungry. So this is uh, kind of a new thing. And the, the curious thing is that I'm noticing that uh, the, the other times that I lost weight, I was unintentionally eating a diet that was very close to what I'm eating now in terms of kosher diets. It was very kosherish. Of course, I was not trying to, but it was uh, very close to kosher. Um, so yeah, it, it is interesting. So anyway, uh, I am curious to know now, because I lost five kilos, well, a little more, but um, I'm not counting that weight because uh, I haven't weighed myself so Technically, I lost five kilos since the seventh of January, which was the last time that I weighed I weighed myself. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious to see how a kosher diet and exercise will impact my fitness. And I'm already feeling a lot of difference in terms of you know mobility and stuff because you know my breasts you know it's something that um, I usually when I lose weight I don't lose breasts and now I, I can almost close this because I bought this before I gained weight due to antidepressants and uh, I'm getting closer to the weight I was prior to antidepressants um, so yeah my normal weight I was always slightly overweight but my normal weight was 84 kilos. Due to antidepressants, I got to, I think, 115. And that's the first time I weighed myself. I'm sure I probably weighed more than that. Then I dropped the antidepressants. I 
went to 104 and uh, from 104 it's oscillating beque between 104 and 94 and 104 94 and I, yes I know it's it's a little I don't like to say my weight but yes uh, I'm all now I've chopped already below a certain weight um, and it keeps on dropping I'm not getting again to over the hundreds uh, so it is good um, so anyway uh, I still can't run because uh, well technically I can I shouldn't because uh, whenever I start to run my knees uh, I have a problem in my knees and they get injured then I can't exercise and I gain weight back um, and it's not good. The, the, the problem with my fitness is always my knees. No one will, will operate them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a sucky part. And uh, but yeah, I'm going back to exercise. I'm, I lost quite a lot of weight already. I think you can tell from my, you know, the way my clothes fit and stuff like that. But it's still not enough. Um, but I'm not looking to to lose weight i'm looking to gain muscle muscle mass and of course not in the arms not to bulk but i want to gain strength in my legs of course some arms and uh, you know the abdominal area i'm lucky enough that my abdominal area isn't the the typical pear pear shaped or apple shaped uh, of bees i have um hourglass figure i tend to gain my weight on my breasts and uh hips but uh i still have some stomach that i gained uh due to you know going to 115 20 whatever i don't know how much i weight but i know that at the time i gained stomach i never had stomach prior to that but i did gain at that time and um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I have quite a lot of, you know, that's not skin yet. There is still fat in there that I can lose. But again, now there are some extra difficulty, difficulties that I didn't have when I first start, started losing weight. Of course, I'm older than I was when I started. So, of course, of course the metabolism is slowing down. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. As long as I don't get these knees injured injured again, I think there won't be any problem. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, uploading this to stay accountable. Because I really need... This is for me... <laughs> I've spent the last 15 years trying to lose weight. And I know when I started, I wasn't this overweight... Uh, no, I was quite athletic as a kid, and I was always slightly overweight, but uh, since I started having problems with my knees, the weight started piling on and piling on. Then I had a diet with my doctor. That diet actually made me gain weight. Um, so it's been a struggle. Um, that's why I don't diet. Diets don't work for me. My problem is exercise, and uh, that's where... That's how I'm tackling my weight problem. <sighs> yes, kosher is helping, but it must be due to some food intolerance that uh, kosher foods removes, uh, that eating kosher removes. I don't know what it is, but there must be some explanation to that. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. Bye, have a good afternoon, and I'll talk to you next video. Bye-bye. Oh, and if someone is trying to lose weight or has knee problems or something, do share your experiences. I'm interested. You know, uh, there's a lot we can learn from each other. I certainly know how it is hard to, to lose weight and how it is hard to when people don't understand the reasons why we can't lose weight uh so yeah it is i do understand why it is uh, but um most people don't understand uh, that uh, not everyone is the same and it, it's not always calories in calories out some bodies are really good at preserving energy 
they're really good at um, at functioning on a low calorie consumption. So, uh, for instance, if you get your body used to undereat, which is why people assume that everyone who is overweight overeats, um, that if you create a caloric deficit that you will lose weight. It can happen in some, time, in some cases, but in other cases, your body just shuts down certain functions that you may not even notice and uh, still run on a caloric deficit. Your, your body becomes very good at managing the calories that you, you ingest, and that's why, and I trust me, is anyone here, anyone here that used to be fit and started under eating and started gaining weight? Tell me, of course, sedentarism also impacts on that. But tell me, anyone here, has anyone started to under eat, like, for instance, eating once a day and probably just an apple or oats or something very you know, below the, the caloric intake that you need for the day and be over two months on 200 calorie a day diet. That happened to me and I didn't lose weight. Actually, I gained weight. Why? Because your body, and that's, uh, that's I've read somewhere that it is likely that the people that are have harder problems at, uh, um, Losing weight may are probably those that have more Neanderthal DNA because uh, their body is more effective at preserving energy or something like that. So, in a sense, this is um, this is a very good evolu evol evolutionary uh, device for someone in the Paleolithic you would be the one surviving because when there is a scarcity of food, your body is very efficient at preserving its functions on a low caloric uh, diet. In modern society, where, is, where there is no shortage of food, we see this as a disadvantage because we tend to gain weight. In terms of survival, it's a very good survival mechanism. In terms of looking fit, being slim, it is sucky. But it's, it's, it's uh, some survival mechanism that developed hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, so, yes, I don't like to be fat, but I'm not blaming my diet on it. I am blaming, blaming the effectiveness of my body at preserving energy. So what do I need to do? I need to over-exercise. Not over-exercise, but exercise more than the average person to lose a certain weight. And of course, I'm going to hit plateaus because the more I... The more I exercise, the more my body gets used to a certain level of intensity and the more he, it will try to hold on to itself and preserve its state of fatness. So, in, in a sense, it is self-preservation, which is why when we, uh, we are exercising, dieting, we hit plateaus because our body learns how to adapt to those changes. So you need to keep on changing so that your body stops, um, um, so that your body doesn't know how to respond to, to, to those uh, caloric deficits. The, the, you know, you need to confuse your body so that your body doesn't know how to preserve itself. That's basically what you need to do. And it's not easy because some people assume that you will just exercise, out-exercise your weight, you will just out-diet your fat. That's not going to happen because our bodies are designed to be efficient machines. If your body 
is in stress. And I'm saying in stress because that's what you're causing. Your body is in stress um, because you're basically attacking your body, making it consume itself. And it will develop a resistance to that. So you need to be extremely careful. Another thing you need to be careful is not to exercise to the point that your body starts consuming your muscles. There's, there, there, are, um, there are, there's a lot of specificity, specificities to weight loss that no one understands. Of course, the, there is a great, nowadays, you can see that most overweight people are not people who, you know, undereat. You can clearly see that they overeat. They, you can clearly see that they're sed sedentary. But that's not all the cases. And in my case, I'm sedentary. I undereat and I'm sedentary. So again, the problem tends to be exercise. Of course, if you eat like crap and exercise, it's not going to yield much results. But again, the key is exercise, exercise. That's the key. And another thing that creates um, weight gain is when you're starving yourself of nutrients. And I'm saying of nutrients because a lot of overweight people eat to their heart's desire, but they are starving themselves of essential nutrients. So their bodies will interpret that as starvation mode and will do the same thing. will slow down the metabolism and try to hold on to every single calorie they ingest. So in sense, it, it, it is also due to nutrition, to lack of nutrition. So for instance, if someone is overeating on pizzas and empty calories, their body is going to interpret that as, yes, there is a caloric excess, but there is a nutrient deficiency, and the body will try to preserve itself. So it's not that easy. Yes, there is a large amount of calories, but you know, you see lots of people that are eating properly and eating sometimes more calories than people who are eating burgers and whatever, and they're not overweight. Why? Because they are you know, nourishing their bodies with the proper nutrients. So the outtake is you need to make sure that you're exercising enough and that you are eating enough. In my case, I need to eat more. Uh, I still, it's, it's really hard and I know I've gone through a lot trying to start eating more, but uh, I did at the time. And I dropped down again to 70 kilos. Then uh, I had a knee injury. I had to stop exercising. Then the antidepressants. All that heads up. But that's it. Be careful when you want to diet. You know, you shouldn't diet based on calories, but based on nutrients. So what you need to do is measure, you know, and again, not everyone from with the same height stature will need the same nutrients. But as an indicative, try to see the macronutrients that you need. And uh, don't cut uh, calories, you know. You need to make your diet based on the macronutrients, not on the amount of calories you ingest. So... Basically, your diet should be uh, the minimum calories that can give you uh, a certain ratio of macronutrients that you need daily. In short, if you can get a certain um, macronutrient ratio with 1600 calories, fine. If you can get that same uh, macronutrient uh, ratio with 1200 uh, calories, fine. But never go, never cut your calories without first assessing the macronutrients that you need. 
that <sighs> I'm sorry, I, I don't know if I'm explaining myself well, but for instance, uh, if you can get uh, a bit of salmon that has a cert certain macronutrients that you need, and you have um, what else? Uh, what else? Uh, a certain amount of uh, legumes that can give you the same amount of macronutrients. What will you choose? You will choose the less caloric option. Of course, there's another thing. Legumes are probably not as good for you because uh, of the carbs that will... I have a little problem digesting carbs, that's why I'm saying that. So you, I'll, I would choose the salmon. So you need to assess your, and also I don't need to eat as much salmon to get my nutrients and I'm not the eating type, so I would choose the salmon. So anyway, again, don't measure your food by volume or calories. Measure it by macronutrients. That's your best bet. Because if you're going to have pizza um you know and you're going to eat it ba based on your calories i'm sorry but you're going to severely severely starve your body of nutrients even though it may be calorically fulfilled uh likewise um eating a good uh, dish of um of uh, chickpeas will fill you won't need as much chickpeas to get nutrition as you need to eat pizza but of course you're not going to choose uh, pizza because it's the less effective form of nutrition in short you should choose always the most effective forms of nutrition the ones that are more nutrient dense so if you have a potato if you so if you have to make a choice between eating potatoes and chickpeas take the chickpeas if you have a choice between eating uh, uh let's say avocado or uh, a mango pick the mango um you know there are certain uh things in terms of nutrition that should be no-brainers avoid co empty co empty calories as much as possible um, and again do not create caloric deficits that would create uh, uh, macronutrient deficiencies that's one of the worst mistakes in terms of dieting and uh, you know it's I know that a lot of people will say, well, well, there was this obese lady here trying to tell me how I should lose weight. Well, this obese lady has been through a lot. She studied a lot and she knows a lot of things. She has limitations, yes, but she's telling you things as they are. And I'm telling you the way I lost weight before, of course, it halted because I had injury and then I took antidepressants. As you can see, I'm losing weight naturally without even trying. This is uh, ma majorly caused by a lot of confusions within medicine, diet industry. You know, there are certain things that we believe, certain myths that we can disconstruct. Of course, you shouldn't believe everyone that tells you that they are overweight and they don't overeat. But rule of thumb, you will know who those people are. And uh, so, yeah, this is what I had to say today. Um, wish me good luck. Wish me that my knee keeps strong this time. And uh, bye.